Hello and welcome back to A for All Space, but not hit Arc 4, we're in Arc 5. Five times as long as Arc 3. There's still no lore video, curious, uh -huh. I would say. <laughs> the grind never stops, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, well, Tanhony has to get to editing, so we've got to get to reading. Are you guys ready? Oh. I interrupted him Wait. when he was reading comments, and now he's annoyed. Yeah, I am annoyed. But first, I forgot we have to do a recap before we can read. <laughs> so last time on Aetheral Space, uh, Jargon and friends scampered off on their ship, but wait, Daphne was there, and she was like, had Jargon as a hostage, and then Ruth was like, I'll blow you away, and then she did, but she also blew a hole in the ship, and Bruno's like, so we're kind of fucked, but we have to crash land on this planet nearby. And meanwhile, um... The guy who we thought was Masmo was actually a contender whose name I forgot. And he had, Wu like, Ming. a bunch of tricks. Wu Ming, yeah, and he has a bunch of tricks yeah. uh, is his gimmick. And he's woken with North! Yeah. And uh, that's what happened, I think. Did I miss anything? That's pretty much it. That's how we closed off. All right. Whatever happened to Jaime and the Widow, or Jamie and the Widow? Well, they, we last saw we saw that uh, Peria was getting on the Widow's ship after... Uh, Fucking getting the victory royale on his last crewmate. And what happened to the widow? She was. Where'd she go? Last we saw, she was also headed in the ship. So we can presume they both headed to that ship and left for destinations nice. unknown. I'm surprised the widow didn't just kill him. Now that she can. Could she? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. What if the widow became the next prince holder? Do you think about that? It can't she... really be stolen. You have to give it. I know, but I. Be, be, you know what I mean. Never mind. <clears throat> Lily was taking care of the cows on the day that it happened. The irritating task had fallen to her, as it usually did. Her parents were away from the homestead, doing business with their partners past. Oh, sorry, partners past Blesty Woods, and her brother Aaron was locked in his room with his books and his lack of a life, just as he'd been ever since getting back from Corin. Lily understood he wanted to become a scholar or whatever, but she didn't see how that necess necessitated leaving all the manual labor to his 12-year-old sister. Based? The cows were docile today, at least. Lily stepped down from the ladder she'd used to get up to the animal's back, dunking her now inky black brush in a bucket of water. The cow chittered pleasantly as soapy water dripped from its back, the white skin there now free of the grime and muck that had accumulated over the last week. You bastards just sit and drink all day. Lily muttered, dunking the brush twice more in a vain attempt to get it clean. Don't know how you get so dirty. The cow shuffled on its wide, flat feet, and then, as if to rub the point home, planted its proboscis deep into the mud and began drinking. Ah, so it's not the cows we know, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Lily so rolled it's... her eyes. <laughs> cows really were stupid. Are they just going to be giant mosquitoes? <laughs> I think <laughs> elephant mosquitoes more than anything. They only had enough intelligence to eat and drink, and sometimes not even that. The brush was a lost cause, Lily decided. The amount of filth that had clung to it was clearly too much for a quick dunk in the bucket to clean off. She'd need to head back to the house and clean it properly. What a pain. Lily set off across the field, winding her way around the monolithic cows that stood still, drinking their fill of the water beneath the ground. These were fairly small specimens, only half as big as her house. <laughs> so they didn't require as much in terms of food and water as some of the goliaths the bigger farms kept. This is kind of a fun thing, having something that's clearly not a cow, but, like, using a word that we would recognize and think of. <laughs> I kind of like that. It was life on a budget, in every sense of the word. She rubbed the back of her neck, the unwelcome heat of the blue sun above, blasting against her. The hot season was going on much longer than they'd expected. She couldn't help but worry about the fungi fields. A good balance of hot and cold were needed for the most lucrative of those to grow properly. She'd have to talk to Dad about it when he got back. The house stood right in the middle of their land, a ramshackle construction that was made from about half a dozen other former domiciles, stuffed together with as much consistency as could be managed, which wasn't that much. Green and yellow fields stretched on in every direction surrounding the house, some for growing crops and others for the cows to graze. They had more land than you'd expect for an operation of this size, but it had come cheap. Proximity to Blasty Woods meant that predators often came sniffing around during the cold season. They'd found cows mauled outside more than a few times. Home! Lily cried as she entered the kitchen through the back door, shaking her boots to get the worst of the mud off of them. Her brother didn't reply. No doubt he had his nose stuffed into some book about economics or natural history or something useless like that. Lily scowled, whipping off her sun hat and tossing it onto the counter. She wouldn't be ignored so easily. 
Making sure footfalls were as loud as possible, she marched up the stairs, past the wall lined with family portraits and yellowing sketches of the surrounding wilderness. The moment she reached Aaron's door, she flung it open without bothering to knock, tilting her head so that her reachers didn't scrape against the frame as she entered. Reachers? Wait, is she also not human? What is going on? What are her reachers? Who can say? I said home! She shouted, angry fists balled at her hips. Aaron looked up, blinking in surprise. He'd nestled himself like a baby bird in one of the old armchairs he'd pulled down from the attic, and had obviously been reading through the dusty old tome that had fallen into his lap. A thick black book with no visible title or blurb. Lily just didn't understand it. Why bother reading something when the creator, creator obviously hadn't bothered writing it? Oh, no, really <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! Lily... <laughs> Lily... Aaron smiled weakly, shoving the book away into a drawer. Sorry, sorry, I, um, I didn't hear you. Lily raised an eyebrow. Liar, it wouldn't kill you to help me out with the cows, you know. Actually, looking at him, that might not have been the case. He'd never been an exceptionally physical person, but it was obvious that he hadn't been doing much in terms of exercise while he was studying in Corrin. His hollow cheekbones had grown more hollow, his pale skin more pale, and his thin limbs thinner. <laughs> I metamorphosizing, Lily. The only thing about his appearance that seemed to have actually improved were the reachers sprouting from his temples. He'd obviously had the chance to go to a proper boutique while he was in Corin. His previously unkempt and wild reachers had been shaved down to two delicate curving arcs, a kind of professional style you'd expect from a man of learning. Lily couldn't help but feel self-conscious about her own reachers. They'd gone through a growth spurt in the last month or so, and now were wide enough that she'd gotten stuck in doorways more than once. Are they like Shrek antennas? <laughs> <laughs> she'd need to get them cut down too before long so I guess they're like hair but they're not hair mm, sorry Lil think what? antlers more than anything animals? antlers antlers gotcha yeah. sorry Lil Aaron said again hands fidgeting in his lap as he smiled sadly I've got some more research I need to do right now it's uh really important okay Lily's frown deepened I've barely even seen you since you got back she sulked Aaron sighed. I know, it'll just take me a little while longer, and then I can help you out with the cows. She looked up at him suspiciously, narrowing her eyes. You promise? I promise. That was the best she could hope for, really. Aaron was sort of weak and sort of cowardly and sort of embarrassing to be around at the best of times, but Lily knew that he'd never broken a promise in his life. If he said he was going to do something, he did it, without fail. Now... Aaron went on, hand wavering back over to the drawer he'd thrown his book into. I'd really appreciate it if you could... Bang! 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 Lily turned around, frowning at the sound. So oh, I thought that was gunshots! I went to Fred! <laughs> That's what it sounds like when you're knocking on the door. Like flamboyantly Someone was... knocking. <laughs> so... <laughs> Someone was at the door. They certainly weren't expecting anyone. Mom and Dad wouldn't be coming back for days yet, and they wouldn't need to knock. I'll get it, she muttered as she turned around and, once again tilting her head, left the room. Um, uh, Lily, Aaron said hurriedly from behind her, his voice unusually panicked. Maybe just hold on a little second. She ignored him. A little second? She ignored him as she hurried down the stairs. It was a little annoying how Aaron was so keen to act mature when it didn't come to actual work. Besides, she wasn't a kid anymore. She was twelve, practically an adult. She could handle something like answering the door herself. As she came back into the kitchen, the noise sounded out again. Faster. Bang, bang, bang. Coming! Lily cried. There was a strange sort of excitement in her chest. It was certainly possible, after all, that Mom and Dad had come back from their business early and just misplaced their keys somewhere. It would be good to have the full family at the farm again. She grabbed the handle, turned it, and opened the door. It wasn't Mom and Dad. Three men stood outside the door, clad in thin black coats, their hands covered by white gloves. The two at the back wore blank masks with only tiny dots to indicate eyes, but the young man at the head of the pack had left his face visible. Sheathed swords hung at their hips. He smiled thinly down on her, but the expression didn't quite reach his eyes. He was tall, with a handsome-looking face and curly, pale hair. The reachers sprouting from his temples were thin and aristocratic, winding around each other in complex yet symmetrical ways. His hands were clasped behind his back as he greeted her. "'Hello, young lady,' he said, voice curiously chirpy. "'Is your brother home?' "'Um,' It was the only thing that would come out of Lily's mouth. She knew the answer, of course, but that the presence of these people was so alien to her life that she couldn't quite comprehend what was happening. The man, seeming to recognize this, chuckled and sheepishly rubbed the back of his neck. <laughs> uh, what am I saying? He sighed. I haven't even introduced myself. My name is Lien, Regulator Lien, from Corin. Are you familiar with the regulatory, miss? Lily mutely shook her head. 
Regulator Lian positively beamed at that. That wait, I thought shook means like no. Yeah. Did, was she like shake? So she doesn't know. She doesn't. Okay, that makes me very happy. Well done. As I was saying, however, is your brother? Oh, speak of the blind man. Lily turned to follow Regulator Lian's gaze at that last bit, only to see Aaron stood at the kitchen table, one hand planted against its surface, looking even paler than usual. The sweat rubbing down his face could have filled the bathtub, most likely. Good afternoon, Aaron mumbled, sounding as if he were going to choke on the words. Excuse me. And to you, Lian responded, tapping his left reacher. You seem distressed. Are we interrupting something? I would hate to learn that we were interrupting something. Just as silently as Lily had, Aaron shook his head. Leon smiled widely. Stella, he said, clasping his hands together. Well, how about we all take a walk? It's such a lovely day, after all. His tone permitted no argument. Young lady, do you go to school? Leon asked, feet crunching against the grass as the three of them walked through the fields. The other two regulators were staying some distance behind, but watching the conversation intently. Lily opened her mouth to answer. I... She doesn't. Aaron interrupted, hands stuffed into his pockets. She was needed around the farm, so she stopped after first honors. Again, Leon clasped his hands together. Admirable! The spirit of community! It's what keeps the world going, you understand. Let people understand what is around them, what is required of them, and behave appropriately. He smiled down at her. Still, I'm sure you would have learned how the world was created in first honors. Could you remind us, dear? Lily glanced uncertainly at Aaron, who was still staring at the regulator with an unfriendly, solid gaze. Go ahead, he muttered. Slowly, she nodded, straining her memory to recall all those boring morning lectures. Okay, um, when the world was young, it was a paradise for only the gods. The gods were uh, Iradian, um, glowing spirits who could take any form they wanted to. They could be a person, or a horse, or a bird, or anything. Masterfully recounted, Leon said with more than a hint of sarcasm. Please continue. Gods got lonely, so they created people. Strong people, and smart people, and sneaky people, and all kinds of people. And everyone lived together all happy- happily, I mean. Until? Even though Leon was speaking to Lily, his eyes were fixed on Aaron. Until the blind man, Lily shuddered. This part had always given her nightmares. He was one of the gods' favorite creations, but he got mad because he didn't like the gods telling him what to do. So one day he tore his own eyes out of his head because he hated them so much, and told all the other bad humans how to kill the gods. And then, um, they did. Leon finished the story, coming to a halt near a few drinking cows as he did. And the god's blood rained down from the heavens, down into the hands of the only good humans left. Us. That blood was the final gift from the gods to their chosen people. Without it, wonders such as the guardian entities would not be possible. Wouldn't you agree? Aaron scratched at his shoulder, staring down at the ground. Are these people gene tyrants? Uh, no. Okay. Aaron scratched at his shoulder, staring down at the ground. I don't know much about that, he mumbled. Leon's smile didn't shift in the slightest. I see, he glanced down at Lily. Would it surprise you, young lady, if I told you that the spirit of the blind man was alive and well today? Lily paled. What? Really? Not in the literal sense, of course. Leon chuckled, placing a reassuring hand on her shoulder. Aaron visibly tensed. But the evil principles and philosophies he represents. Disrespect to the gods, disrespect to society, disrespect to, well, to the very way of things. Action born of spite. These things run through our society like a vein of tainted blood. His grip on Lily's shoulder grew tighter and she winched involuntarily in pain. You're hurting me. Stop it. As Aaron glared at the regulator, his hands slowly came out of his pockets, falling into fists at his sides. Leon ignored him, suddenly pulling Lily slightly closer. In the very height of that disrespect is what I'm here to deal with today, he said, a small theatricality entering his voice, as if this field were a stage in the cows as audience. If God's blood was the last gift given to mankind, then surely the most heinous crime would be to steal it. Don't you agree, young man? For a moment there was silence, save for the whistling of the wind and the groaning of the cows. Leon stared at Aaron, Aaron stared at Leon, and Lily looked back and forth between the two, fear written into every every facet of her expression. Then there was a flash of orange light, like a split-second sunset, and Aaron punched the regulator in the chest. Aaron had always been weak. Lily knew for a fact that he could barely muster the strength to lift a bag of grain. She expected that being punched by him would be like being punched by an ant. And yet, and yet regulator Leon went flying backwards, rolling to a stop nearly five meters away. He recovered quickly, getting to his feet and dusting himself off, but he couldn't hide the grimace of pain on his face. He'd felt that, oh, his god's blood aether, 
Or is it like aether boosting juice? <clears throat> it's inside. I see, Leon said, taking a moment to spit blood down onto the grass. So it wasn't enough to covet the god's blood. Now you intend to use it against your fellow man, too? How despicable. Aaron was still standing in the position he'd punched Leon from, fist still extended outwards as he panted in shock. Strands and sparks of orange energy, of god's blood, I knew it, god's blood's aether, ran throughout his body. It collected especially in his fingernails, letting them a peculiar orange glow that pulsed in time with his breathing. Just leave us alone, he whispered, nowhere near as imposing as he clearly wished. I haven't even done anything! Leon laughed scornfully. You've just attempted to murder me. Worse, you've stolen high knowledge from the Prester's libraries. I'm sure you know what punishment is in store. Oh, is Aether illegal on this planet? <laughs> uh, Dear God and friends are going to be in trouble. <laughs> oh no. Aaron's eyes flicked to Lily. Run, he panted. Just run, get out of here! Lily froze, her whole body shaking. The other two regulators were still standing a distance away, hands clasped in front of them. Clearly not worried in the least. Oh, is this like a totalitarian government where you can't learn Aether so you can't rise up? Is that what's going on? That's my guess. I'm locking that in. She didn't understand. She didn't understand what was happening at all. What was going on? What had her brother done? Lily! Aaron screamed at her in action. She's wise not to run. Lynn smirked, holding his hands out as if to pray. She's about to witness a miracle, after all. Aaron Arbrisher, I invite you to witness the true favor of the gods. Aaron gritted his teeth, squeezed his eyes shut, and the orange god's blood around his body intensified. It was as if he was bracing himself for a hit. At that, Leon only grinned. Guardian entity, he intoned with all the dignity of scripture. Teke teke! Pale green god's blood appeared around Regulator Leon for a moment, dancing around his entire body before detaching itself and collecting into a bright clump in front of him, like a miniature green star. Lily held up her hands to shield her eyes from the emerald incandescence, stepping back in fear. The light began to dim, and as it did, Lily noted a new sound had become apparent, a kind of hollow, wet breathing. Gingerly, she moved her hands away from her face. The humanoid thing that had appeared in front of Regulator Leon was vaguely feminine in shape, but sickly green, scaled with a face that was little more than the vaguest shallow indentations to suggest eyes and a mouth. It dragged itself forward on stick-thin clawed hands, gurgling. It couldn't walk, for its body terminated just past the torso, the closest thing to a lower body being the spinal cord that waved in the air like a tail. Ordinarily, this would have seemed a sickly thing, deserving of pity, maybe, but certainly not fear, if not for the scythe clutched in its hands, a huge weapon of bone and sinew, fresh blood and phlegm dripping from sores around the white blade. An organic pulsing tube connected the base of the handle to the creature's navel, like a sick parody of an umbilical cord. Wooly couldn't conceal her disgust, face twisting in horror. This thing was meant to be a miracle? It looked diseased. A nearby cow honked in distress, <laughs> shuffling fearfully. You can prompt the god's blood you stole to flow, Lean chuckled, twirling a lock of hair between his fingers. <laughs> but you can bring forth a divine servant. How sad for you. Still, if you think you have a chance against Teke Teke, you're welcome to try. She's ready to receive you. Stunned user, regulator Liam. Stunned name, Teke Teke. <laughs> Alright, so theories. Either these guardians are, like, Aether-awakened people that they captured, or they're fucking gene tyrant leftovers. I'm calling it now. It's one or the other. Aaron gulped, looking down at the creature dragging itself across the floor. It pulled itself across the grass with one hand, dragging the scythe behind it with the other, painfully slow until it... until it wasn't. With a flash of movement, the guardian entity zoomed forward from its position and appeared right in front of Aaron, scythe raised high above its head. With a feral scream, it brought the weapon down the blade sh... Should there oh, be a common there? Yeah. The blade shining with green god's blood. Aaron wasn't fast, wasn't strong, but for just a moment he was very lucky. As he jumped back in surprise, the sudden movement caused the slash to just miss him, the blade lodging itself in the ground instead. Teka Teka snarled in frustration as Aaron retreated farther, his back thumping against the frightened cow's stomach as he met the organic wall. Lily screamed and charged forward to try to do something, anything, but she was far too slow. The guardian entity struck again with a wild slash of its sight that sailed over Aaron's head, barely nicking the hide of the cow. Leon clicked his tongue. The hell are you aiming at? He mumbled under his breath. Still clinging to the side of the cow, Aaron looked over at Lily, tensing his legs. Clearly he intended to charge over here, grab her, and make a run for it, but he wouldn't get the chance. The tiny scratch that Teka Teka had inflicted on the, cow, on the cow glowed bright green with an, glowed bright with an eerie green light, and, and the cow was cut perfectly in half. Not from the wound that had been inflicted, not even in the same direction as the wound. A new vertical cut appeared right along the cow's midsection, going all the way through its body. A second later, the animal collapsed into two pieces, screaming with strangled fear and pain. Green guts and viscera spilled forth freely. 
Aaron could only blink, horrified at how quickly the Goliath had been killed. Lily, too, stared agape at the cow's rapidly expiring carcass. She'd seen those animals survive being struck by lightning, and yet this creature had killed it like it was nothing. This didn't make sense. None of this made sense. Just half an hour ago, she'd been cleaning the back of a cow exactly like that one. Why couldn't she still be doing that? Leon laughed, spreading his arms wide. You see, he called out, the other two regulators marching to join him by his sides. This is the kind of power a guardian entity commands. The kind of power you tried to steal for yourself. By merely scratching something, my Teke Teke has the ability to cut it perfectly in half, right down the middle, the transcendent ratio of execution. And what can you do, hmm? Run and hide? Cower with your stolen power? Even with the green blood pooling around his feet, Aaron stayed surprisingly firm. It's just knowledge, he breathed, resolute. That's not something you can steal, and it's not something you can punish me for! Oh, Leon rubbed the back of his neck, a wicked grin spreading across his face. I beg to differ. Teke Teke lunged forward again, moving at blinding speeds, but this time its target was different. This time the nightmare visage of the creature grew larger in Lily's vision, its skin-covered mouth wide as it screamed, on tr I assume, in triumph. Aaron didn't hesitate. No! He roared, leaping forward with a flash of orange light, slamming his body into lilies, pushing her out of the way as he flew, and then the very tip of the scythe's blade brushed against his boot, leaving the tiniest, tiniest scratch. It flowed green. Lily fell face first on the ground in a heap, flipped herself around, and looked up at her brother. I think face first is two separate words. Oh, yeah. He stood there, foot glowing green, orange god's blood furiously ranging around his body. His face was a mask of utter concentration, eyes bulging, teeth bared. Run! He hissed down at her. Behind him, Leon clapped sarcastically. The Teka Teka creature returned to him, dragging itself to his side and rubbing its face against his leg affectionately. He patted its head with a free hand. You're trying to delay the activation? Leon smirked. I wasn't even aware that could be done. Valiant, but futile, I should think. Still, it's been interesting. His eyes narrowed and the tiniest smug laugh trickled from his throat. <laughs> By the way, he whispered his voice carried by the wind. I've already killed your parents. Oh, come on. How much more evil can you make him? Come on. <laughs> He's a come on now. <laughs> it's, it's a tactical it's a purpose. He's trying to distract him. The orange god's blood spluttered away as a strangled cry escaped Aaron's mouth, and a second later, red blood exploded out from his midsection, striking Lily's face and obscuring her vision. She screamed a choked scream of her own at the burning blood covering her, at what Leon had just said, and what she knew she'd seen of her brother when she opened her eyes, but she couldn't stop herself. She looked. Just like the cow, Aaron had been sliced cleanly in half, his legs splayed out a meter away from his upper torso, connected only by the river of blood that had once filled his body. Though the, through the gap in Aaron's torso, the guardian entity had created, Lily could see nothing but blood and muscle and awful white bone. Aaron's breathing, such as it was, grew even more shallow as he stared up at the sky, his paling hands curled into fists. And that's that! Regulator Leon said cheerfully, slapping his hands together. He glanced to his two compatriots. I trust you don't need my help to dispatch a child! Lily was surprised by the sound of her own voice. It was only the faintest mumbling, spoken as she stared at her dying brother. What? Leon winced. Nasty business, I'm afraid. Knowledge was stolen and could have been shared. You'll have to die as well. Well, I... I don't know anything. There was no anger, no sadness, no real fear. Just a state of utter confusion. It was beyond not understanding why this had happened. She didn't understand what was happening. Leon sighed, rubbing the back of his neck. I didn't want to stay out in the sun for too long. Just cut it down and let's... The regulator never finished his sentence, for a red hole had appeared between his eyes, and a second later the god's blood sparking pebble that had created it blasted out the back of his head, painting the grass with red blood and brain. He fell backwards, mouth still open for his final sentence, and a second later Teke Teke vanished in a spark of sickly green god's blood. The remaining two regulators stepped back from the corpse, surprised almost comical in their body language, before remembering themselves and drawing their swords. Lily looked at the source of the attack, at her brother. In the last seconds of his life, he looked back up at her. Oh no, Aaron! He looked back up at her and whispered through broken lips, Run! And Lily ran. She ignored the shouts of the regulators, ignored the roaring of the wind and the thundering of the skies the hours stretched on, ignored the screams erupting from her own throat. The grass beneath her feet turned to sun-baked mud as her flight took her through the woods, deeper and deeper, deeper still. She didn't stop running for a long time. Man, I'm, I'm fucked up. No, he was the dyer. My man he Aaron. was with the rose. Those, those God's blood filled roses do sting, don't they? <laughs> No! 
All right, I'm popcorning it. I'm too sad. Six years later. A star fell from the sky that night. That's my mistake here. Lily really relied on the comforting blue moonlight to show what was before her. She brought a torch, but that had ended up being shoved into the face of the scout Corridor had sent. Fire to the face had startled him. Two kicks to the neck had finished him. The star had crashed in the middle of the woods, leaving a flaming trail through the trees behind it. Lily hadn't been quite sure what she'd expected, but this certainly wasn't it. It was made of metal, first of all. Shiny, smooth white metal, like you expect a noble to have jewellery made from. The size of it, though, could fill storehouses with jewellery. It was bigger than most houses, like some giant metal creature gilded in on itself. Something was open on the side of the massive object, a huge crack in one side. Lily poked her head through, holding her scarf over her mouth to stay off the smoke pouring from the ruin. She didn't have much time to look around. Ted and the rest of her crew would arrive soon, but the regulators would be right behind them. Lily had no choice but make a quick inspection before preparing to flee. She didn't have to look long. Incredibly, impossibly, there were people inside the fallen star, four of them all in a heap. A dark-haired older man, a white-haired younger man, and a blonde person lying atop the others. Those three were face down, but breathing. The only one whose face was visible was the fourth, a red-haired young woman, her hands covered with sharp armored Wait bullets. a minute. Why did she say four? I mean, I know we know Bruno and Serena's different, but how would she know they're two people if they're it's unconscious? She's described three of them, and she's doing a bigger description of the fourth one. Oh, 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 my bad, I'm dumb. Her hands covered with sharp armored gauntlets that flickered out of existence even as Lily watched. Red God's blood spluttered around her wrist for a moment, then nothing. But that wasn't what sent chills down Lily's spine. What did that was the fact that none of these people, not one, had reaches. Not even the requisite holes for reachers. They weren't human. Oh, uh, so this is like an isolated, weird society. <laughs> she thinks they're not human because they don't have deer people antlers. All right, this they reminded should... me of several things. Mm. First, the ant- the reacher antlers kind of reminded me of the music video for uh, for that Fall Out Boy song, Sugar, We're Going Down. Did you ever watch that? I'm not familiar. Okay, well, there's like a guy and he has antlers. I'll show it to you in a bit. Uh, and the second thing it reminded me of when they were like, mm, you stole knowledge, die, was was that, uh, obviously it was a bit more nuanced than this, but remember that uh, horror story Reddit thing you showed me and it was like, I was driving, the police officer caught me, too bad, the punishment for driving without <laughs> a license is death. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> knowledge isn't a crime, isn't it, smile? <laughs> So this is going to be the most uh, JoJo arc of April Space. I just want Lily to be happy, all right? I hope she joins the crew, and I hope she gets to be happy. And I hope Aaron's alive somehow. He's not, but a man can... He's like Polner. Why would you build up such a likable character and then kill him immediately? To make you sad. (laughs) To harm you emotionally. Er Aaron should have been the main character, not Dragon. Dragon should have died there against (laughs) Lily. Why would he be there? I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm mm-hmm. kind of Knowledge is illegal. I'm a cogitant, so I guess I'm a criminal mastermind. Emphasis on master. It's me, Dragon. <laughs> oh, this yeah. is so funny, though, that they call themselves humans. Now I'm wondering, are they the original humans, or are they just, like, some offspring of people, and, like, they are isolated and don't know better? I'm curious. Also, I wonder if those antlers are, like, fungi or something, because they... Cause, you know, like fungi that root in people's brains or something. Mm. I'm curious. Well, we could we will very well find out the answers to all questions. Or maybe she's right. Maybe they are the original humans, and all these like other gene tyrant offsprings aren't human anymore because they've been fiddled with. You know what I mean? Very so, good questions. There's so many, so many possibilities. But for now, we'll leave it off. Mm, that was a good bad. ass chapter. It was long, my throat hurts a little, so I'm going to take a break before we record the next thing. But that was good. Uh, does Arc 5 that. have a tentative name? Um, not yet. I don't even have one in mind yet. Have you named Arc 4? That was the, uh, U- the, the Unite Region arc. Ah. Alright. Uh, were you saying something before I cut you off on accident? Uh, no, that was it. Alright, bye! I was, saying, I was saying bye. <laughs> bye! Oh, hi.